Mastermind, Strategist for Hire, written by Clouds, my head in the clouds not coming down, and read by Eleanor Elizabeth. Chapter 26. Endeavour. Endeavour was hosting a press conference. He practically growled when yet another reporter had the audacity to question his property damage. Seriously, who cared if a few buildings burnt down, as long as he put those villains' scum where they belonged? He wouldn't even be hosting this press conference, but his PR team insisted that it was important to be visible if he wanted to maintain his place as the number one hero, especially since some idiot wannabe reporter had released his sealed property damage reports yesterday. He was going to find whatever idiot thought that was a good idea and ruin their career. But first, he had a press conference to get through. Endeavour, what do you have to say about your missing son, Shoto? Are you any closer to finding him? Endeavour grit his teeth. Of course, they were trying to bait him by reminding him that his masterpiece was still missing. There have been no leads at this time, but I assure you that I will find Shoto and bring him home. Those villains are going to regret taking my son. Well, that's rather rude, isn't it, father? All eyes went to the speaker, and Endeavour's eyes widened as he saw his son walking up behind the mass of reporters, the villain Darby smirking beside him. If you wanted to talk to me so badly, you could have just asked. No point in making threats if you can't follow through on them. The reporters parted to let Shoto and Darby through, most scrambling to get out of the way of a known villain, while the braver one shoved Mike's in Shoto's face. Both kinds were ignored, as Shoto and Darby continued moving towards Endeavour, staring at him steadily. Endeavour cursed. He wanted to attack Darby, but he couldn't risk harming Shoto, not to mention the impact it would have on his rating if any of those stupid reporters ended up being collateral damage. Shoto had changed since he'd last saw him. he cut his hair, for one, wearing it in some ridiculous style that was popular among the uncultured masses for some reason. Endeavour scowled. He'd have to make sure Shoto grew his hair out again, so he looked dignified and set himself apart from the rabble. He also carried himself with more confidence, which Endeavour would almost be proud of if his masterpiece wasn't walking side by side with a villain without attacking him. Shoto's outfit was frankly ridiculous. It was almost as if he'd picked it out to match Darby, but that couldn't be right. His masterpiece would never sink so low. So it was probably some horrific coincidence, or something the villain had forced him into. He wore a dark red tank top and black jeans with holes in them. He paired the outfit with a billowing navy overcoat similar to Darby's, except without the sleeves, showing off his muscular arms. Another unfortunate choice Endeavour would have to beat out of him. Shoto felt powerful. He could hear whispers running through the crowd, wondering if he'd escaped and what he was doing with a member of the League. Out of the corner of his eye, he could see a few horrified expressions as some of the smarter reporters connected the dots. Good. Endeavour was scowling at him, most likely judging his new aesthetic and fantasising about the best way to beat it out of him. Too bad he'd never get the chance. He could see Endeavour mentally weighing the benefits of flat-out attacking Darby right then. But Shoto knew his father wouldn't be able to without risking his ever-important popularity rating. Endeavour was predictable, if nothing else. It was going to make him easy to kill. Shoto! I give you permission to freeze that villain! Oh, so that's how Endeavour was going to play this, huh? Just give Shoto emergency permission. Then he won't have to worry about his popularity going down, even if there is collateral damage, because what father wouldn't encourage his son to protect himself? Shoto gave his best innocently confused expression. But father, why would I attack my own brother? Whispers broke out among the reporters, and Shoto glared at Endeavour. Oh, that's right. I don't think you ever told them about Toya, did you? After all, he didn't have the perfect quirk I did, Shoto spat. He was just another one of our mother's failures. Isn't that what you told us growing up? Hey, Dad, Darby smiled. Did you miss me? 
Some of the reporters were on their phones, trying to figure out if Toya Todoroki really existed. The records wouldn't be too hard to find. Izuku made sure of that. Endeavour himself looked like he'd seen a ghost, which, in a way, Shoto supposed he had. It must be difficult to have the runaway son you'd written off as dead come back into your life as a villain. By the way, father, I won't be... How did you put it? Oh, that's right. Coming home any time soon. In fact, I don't intend to come home at all. He felt a thrill at Endeavour's enraged expression. I'm not just Shoto anymore, Shoto said, tossing his arms out to his sides dramatically as he stared down his father. I go by freezer burn now. In unison, both he and Darby shot fire at Endeavour, who simply scowled and remained unmoved. Some of the smarter reporters had started to run away, and Shoto rolled his eyes and froze them in place. Their plan relied on having a captive audience, after all. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah! Uh, we can't have that. Darby set a jet of superheated flame out to the side and ignited a trail of gasoline they had set before the press conference, creating a massive wall of flame around the area. The reporters started to scream and push against each other as they realised they were boxed in. Give up on this childish rebellion, Shoto! Endeavour's voice rose above the sounds of the flames. I don't know what poisonous lies this man has been telling you, but I created you to be a hero, not whatever this is. Don't ruin your future. The media had started to calm down, despite the hostage situation, and had their cameras trained on Shoto, waiting for his next move. He returned his father's glare. What future? My future as a hero? Or my future as your masterpiece? Endeavour's eyes widened minutely. Either way, it's no great loss. I didn't ask for either one. Shoto! Endeavour growled, but Shoto ignored him, making sure to speak loud enough that the cameras would hear him. You were the one that forced my mother into a marriage she didn't want, just to get your hands on her quirk. You were the one who isolated me from the world, from the moment my quirk manifested, so that the others couldn't get in my way. You were the one who beat me black and blue every day of my childhood and called it training. The only sounds that could be heard were the roar of flames and the approaching sirens. The media held their breath as they waited to see how Endeavour would respond to his accusations. Come home, Shoto. You will be a hero. Shoto sighed and shook his head. If being a hero means being like you, I'd rather be a villain. He looked up at his father. At least I'm being honest about who I really am. Enough, Shoto! Endeavour growled. I will not stand for this! Then full. Shoto stomped down with his right foot and sent a river of ice towards the podium his father was standing behind, encasing it in solid ice. Endeavour simply kicked the block, knocking it to the floor where it shattered with an icy crash. He ran at Shoto, but he had temporarily forgotten about Darby, who came at him from behind, barbecuing his back with blue fire. <coughs> Endeavour turned around towards Darby with contempt. Did you forget that that never worked when you were younger, Toya? Oh, I'm just getting warmed up, Darby taunted. Besides, you can't even go all out right now because of all these reporters. So you can't hurt me either. Endeavour shot a ball of flame at Darby, who dodged to stand beside Shoto and in front of the reporters, effectively using them as a shield. If we're going to fight, let's fight, Endeavour yelled. Only cowards use hostages. And only cowards beat their kids. So I guess that makes us even, Darby yelled back. The sirens were getting closer now. They'd probably arrive in under a minute, along with at least a handful of heroes. Shoto and Darby exchanged a look before turning around and firing into the crowd, superheating the air, but being sure to keep their attacks weak enough that the reporters would only be injured, not killed. Arriving heroes wouldn't be distracted by rescuing corpses, after all. Endeavour tackled Darby, obviously seeing him as the bigger threat. Shoto rolled his eyes and switched to ice. Might as well create a variety of injuries for the heroes to deal with when they arrived. Darby and Endeavour grappled to the ground for a few moments before the fire trucks arrived and water started falling. A few hoses focused on carving pathways through the wall of flames, 
allowing some heroes through. They took one look at the hundred or so injured screaming reporters and cursed. Let's take this elsewhere, yeah? Darby smiled. You wouldn't want to get in the way of the rescue efforts, would you? He got up and ran away with Shoto on his heels, letting Endeavour chase after them. Apparently, the area of the city they were in had already been evacuated, because they didn't run into anyone else. The other heroes apparently trusted that Endeavour could take care of his sons and didn't come to help. Everything was going according to the plan. Shoto caught Darby's eye, and they headed into an evacuated office building, making it a few floors up before turning around and letting Endeavour catch up to them. Endeavour burst through the door, rage mixing with betrayal in his eyes, which just made Shoto angrier. What right did he have to feel betrayed after what he had done to them? You're weak, boys. Endeavour advanced with flames in both hands. I thought I raised you better than this. Oh, Dad, Darby replied. This is what you raised us for. Endeavour sent a stream of fire at Darby, who returned it with one of his own. The enclosed space turned into an oven as the flames burnt hotter and the heat was unable to escape. Shoto used his right side to cool both himself and his brother, but left Endeavour to overheat. I've indulged you for far too long. Let's finish this, Endeavour said. It's a shame to have to damage my masterpiece, but it's worth it to get you back on the right track. Flash fire fist, prominence burn! Shoto created a massive dome of ice, just in time to shield them from the attack, but it was vaporised almost instantly. The jet of fire ripped through the wall behind them and pushed both him and Darby out onto the street. Shoto could dimly hear a helicopter recording the fight from above. Darby, are you okay? Shoto crouched next to his brother, who was kneeling on the ground and cooled the air around them. I'm fine, Shoto, he grunted, standing up. It's not like I'm not used to it. Surrender now, Endeavour ordered, jumping down to the street and walking towards them. He was breathing hard and sweat had soaked through his costume, which was only made worse by the raging fire behind him. Shoto gave Darby a small smile, who returned it with a grin and created a firewall around the three of them. Seems like you're looking a little worse for wear there, huh, Dad? Darby taunted. Isn't prominence burn one of those special moves that makes you overheat? It doesn't matter, villain. Endeavour kept advancing. This fight won't last much longer. Are you sure about that? Shoto stood up straight and frosted over his left side. I can go on for hours. Endeavour scowled and shot another fireball at Shoto, who blocked it with an ice wall. The more you use your fire, father, the more I can use my ice. You should know that considering that you're the one who wanted this quirk so badly. Endeavour was panting now, but stubbornly kept up his attacks, even letting loose another prominence burn, though the second one was much weaker than the first had been. Shoto smiled slightly when Endeavour went to take a step, but stumbled, swaying slightly as he regained his balance. Shoto nodded at Darby, who shot another fireball at Endeavour's back. His heat exhaustion made him too slow to dodge it, and he cried out as the flames burnt him. How do you like that, Dad? Darby spat. How does it feel to burn as you're forced to overuse your quirk? Endeavour just grunted and shot another attack. Shoto glanced up at the news helicopter circling above them. They needed to wrap this up before more backup came. Well, father? Shoto stared Endeavour in the eyes when his father whipped around to face him. I'd say goodbye. But really, it's more like good riddance. He slammed his right foot to the ground and sent jagged spears of ice towards his father. Endeavour's eyes widened as he tried to dodge, but between Darby's flame wall and his own relentless attacks, he got gotten far too hot to continue the fight. A thick icicle hissed as it struck his chest, but as soon as it melted, it was replaced by another, each one penetrating deep into Endeavour's torso. Darby extinguished his firewall and watched as Shoto's ice stopped melting immediately, and instead turned red as it coated with blood. He went to stand next to Shoto, and watched their father's face as his angry expression turned to one of pain, and then faded altogether as the light left his eyes. There was a long moment where everything was silent. 
Shoto couldn't hear the roar of fires, or the sound of the helicopter, or the approaching sirens, or even Darby asking him if he was okay. The only thing he could think was what he had just done. Shoto had actually killed that bastard for what he'd done to their family. Suddenly, he threw his head back and laughed. As hard as he tried, he couldn't stop as he ran out of breath and he felt both his cheeks start to ache as Darby joined in. He was free. Hey there guys, gals and non-binary pals. It's Eleanor and I hope you're having a lovely day today. I'm so happy to be back. I'm sorry, I know I've been gone for it's been like a whole two weeks. Two weeks! Feels crazy. Uh, but I was, in fact, very ill. I'm not sure if you saw my community post. I did try to warn you all that I wouldn't be about. But yeah, I was I was very, very ill. It was giving uh <laughs> it was giving like AO3 author's notes. Something terrible has happened to me. Uh, but I am doing so much better. Thankfully, the antibiotics, so many antibiotics that I was on, have kicked in and helped clear the multiple infections that I was having at once. I literally, I don't know what happened to me, but I am back and happy to be here. I was so bored. I don't think you understand how bored I was not making podfix. It was like killing me because I just couldn't do it. My voice was fucked. It's still questionable. Like, I can feel, like, the croak in the back of it. And it... Mm, but I'm legible now. So we're back. <laughs> Luckily, this chapter's mainly only, like, three characters. So there wasn't too many voices to be worried about. So hopefully they were okay. Hopefully they didn't sound too bad. Hopefully you don't hear the noticeable difference in how much of this I recorded before I got sick versus afterwards. But what did you think of this chapter? Oh, my God. It was crazy. You know what? And Endeavor had to go. He had to get his comeuppance. And it was it's really great seeing like Davi and Shoto working together and just, you know, taking on their abuser and being like, mm, fuck you. But yeah, please let me know what you thought of the chapter in the comments below. Cause I've missed talking to you guys. It's it's been a lonely two weeks. I mean obviously like there's like still like people like catching up with the old ones. But, like, I miss hearing your new thoughts on fresh chapters. It's exciting. But I did try to use my time productively-ish. So I've come back with news, I guess. First of all, while I was gone, I made a Ko-Fi. What is this crazy behaviour? I know. So, I... <laughs> but, you know, I was asked about it on Discord. And then I was like, I don't know, maybe I should do it. I did that. And... Um, I sh shared it briefly in like the discord but I'm letting you guys know about it now I did have my first ever supporter on ko-fi so big thank you to Rosie uh, I appreciate it a lot just the fact that you appreciate this enough to actually think it was worth any money <laughs> so if you want to support me on ko-fi if you want to be shouted out at the end of these videos, go ahead and do that because that's really nice of you. Also, uh, fun news, I now I'm putting these on Spotify. Obviously, there's a lot to kind of backdate. I'm not sure how many of the old ones I'm going to put on Spotify. Maybe this is the chance to kind of forget about some of the early ones because they were really bad. Oh, God. I don't delete them because I know some of you like them and you wouldn't want me to delete them. But God, some of my first podfix make my ears bleed. So I, I probably won't put them on Spotify because I'm not exactly proud. Maybe if I remake them. Maybe. But I am going to start putting stuff on Spotify if you want to do that. I don't really know how it works, but I did it. You know, I guess it's like convenient and you can like download them quite easily on Spotify if you need to listen offline and you don't have like YouTube premium to do that because to be fair, she's expensive. <laughs> Also, during my time off, I decided I am going to do another Q&A. Also, like, something a little special is going to happen in that video. But until then, please leave your questions for Q&A in the comments. That would be really nice so that I have some, some basis for the rest of that video. Because, you know, it's nice to talk to you guys. And it's been a while. Um, there is a lot more of you now than there was the first one. So... 
new people may have new questions and I mean some might be repeat questions who knows maybe my answers will have changed but you can ask me anything because you know I don't know maybe you don't want to get to know me that would be fair I just read you fanfic but if you do want to get to know me better you can do that and we'll have a good time I think that's all the announcements that I have so yeah be sure to like the video you know if you liked it and to boost my serotonin levels uh leave comments down below you know let me know what you thought about the chapter question for q a whatever you want i just like to talk to you guys uh you can also subscribe to be notified whenever i make new videos you can join the discord if you're not in it it's a fun time i also have instagram and twitter <laughs> and those will be in the description as well if you like this video, you can watch the whole playlist of all of this if you, for some reason, this was your first one. You should probably catch up on them. But I also have a lot of other videos, so you can check those ones out as well. I want to say another extra special thank you to Rosie. Thank you so much. You are the sweetest, and I am incredibly grateful. Um, but until I see you all again, be sure to practice some self-care. That's right, you need to be going to bed on time, drinking your water because you must be hydrated. Be sure to eat your five a day and don't forget to brush your teeth. And love yourself because you deserve it. Yes, this is a threat. God, I'm so sorry this outro is so long. <laughs> I will catch you all later.